So local government election will be on Monday, February 26. And thank you so much for joining us. You're watching All Angles. I'm Dion Jax Miller. And still to come in the program, or later in the program, I should say, we're going to be talking to a representative of the Jamaica Labour Party. We're also going to be talking to representatives from citizens' associations. And as always, we welcome your comments. Remember, you can WhatsApp us or you can message us on X or hashtag is TVJ all angles. First, so General Secretary of the People's National Party, Dayton Campbell, joins me in studio. Dr. Campbell, thank you so much. We appreciate you talking to us. Thank you for having me. Good evening to you and good evening to your viewers as well. So you're ready to tell us yet how many councils you or co corpor municipal corporations you think the PNP will win? <laughs> we'll win the majority of the councils. So we have 14 councils in the country. We currently <coughs> have six. And we expect that after Monday, when we, uh, the ballots are finally counted, that the PNP will have more than six councils. I'm not prepared to say exactly which ones because we're still in a competitive space and I don't think it is prudent to come here and highlight that um, and give opponent, my opponents information. But you're, you're confident. We can play back this clip Tuesday morning. Yes, you can. And you won't have egg on your face. You, you <laughs> think you won't have egg on your I face. I won't, I won't. All right, let's get into some of the issues because one of the complaints there has been from a lot of people is that the parties have been making this uh, 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 a proxy for a general election. You know, we know the last general was 2020, last mm -hmm. local government was 2016. So people who, I guess, want to vote have been looking to this election and you guys seem to have been capitalizing on that or exploiting that depending on your point of view. So reasonable criticism you think uh, well what had happened is that late last year the government started to have divisional and constituency conferences leading up to their annual conference and they started this discussion about the third term if, if you recall that late last year there was a lot of discussion all of their meetings they're talking about a third term don't give up on the government and we started hearing a lot of promises then they started talking about <coughs> um, their achievements and they placed it in the context that it is currently in. We have sort of responded um, to that because in a, in a competitive space, you have to um, participate in the debate that is taking place. But we've also tried to center, center our campaign around the issues that we consider the bread and, bread and butter issues of local government. Uh, so we have been saying that time comes for change and um, change for us is, uh, um, we've defined what the change is. This is an acronym. Um, the C is for community development and um, citizen security. The H is for health. We want healthy humans and, and communities. The A is for access and accountability. The N is a new vision for local government. The G is for garbage collection and disposal. And the E is for economic models and entertainment. And we can have a discussion about what or we build out each of those and what exactly we mean when we say each one of those. So we have not made it into a general election campaign. We understand that it's a local election campaign, but we understand as well that the misery index in the country is very high. You, you sound and like you're saying you joined a general election campaign. You I, saw one being run, so you decided <laughs> you all had to well, work with that, well, that as well. I mean, everywhere we go, people are saying that time comes for a change of government. So I mean, a party that is in opposition, <laughs> what do you do? You that's, it, that's an issue, though, because you say a party in opposition. But I mean, in reality, as you alluded to earlier, the people's National Party is actually in charge of a number of these municipal corporations. Yes. But you wouldn't think it to listen to you. To listen to you is like we're in opposition and when we win, so and so got changed. But the fact is, it's not as if you're holding up your municipal corporations as model corporations well, that we can look to to say this is what would happen if you win in, in every parish. So what's the point? But if I said it, probably you wouldn't believe me. So let us look at what the latest poll said. Uh, that you published earlier this week, when they looked at the best performing councils, St. Catherine and Hanover came in the top. And when you look at the worst performing councils, we only had one in the majority of them were JLP councils. When we listened to the Minister of Local Government during the last debate, he was asked to list some markets within <laughs> councils that are controlled by the Labour Party. He listed Hanover, St. Catherine and Manchester, all of those controlled by the People's National Party. So by his own admission, and from the poll results, we're seeing that the PNP councils have been performed better. Now there is a rate limiting step as to what you can do because some of the funding does come from central government. But what we've been able to do is in the councils that we control is to make do with what is 
locally within the council. And so some of the discussion that we're having on about a new vision is how do we change some of those things to ensure that one, we uh, entrench a fixed election date for local government. So we are not again in the situation that we found ourselves in where we have had four postponements. And to look at giving autonomy to the councils and uh, to put a division or development fund in place so that when you elect a councillor, you can hold them accountable and they can deliver things to you. And our mechanism, there are things that we are putting on the table that doesn't require central government to do. So the councils that are held by the PNP, for example, in our community <coughs> participation, citizen participation, we're, we're gonna mandate that all of them will have to have quarterly meetings, town hall meetings, to discuss with the community what they're doing, okay. that they will have to produce a budget, they will have to make that public. Right there is a yes. critical part of the, the problem. So for instance, you pointed to the polls, you pointed to what you said Mr. Mackenzie said, and yes. all those are external forces yes. looking at your councils. But it comes back to my point that y'all don't actually sound like you're in charge because what you're saying there now, mm -hmm. why why wouldn't that have been done before? If you're in charge of, of, of um, you said no six corporations, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you have mandated before those kinds of community interactions and those accountable, accountability measures? You're promising it now because mm -hmm. you're on a campaign trail. No, so why should we believe you now when it's something that could easily without mm -hmm. any money from mm -hmm. central government have been done before well life is not static right politics is not static it's dynamic and we're always looking at ways to improve what we do that's and basic so, though community no, no, meetings are not, pretty basic it is it is and it is something that in the past pnp administration it was a staple it hasn't be, it hasn't been under this government um you've seen the evisceration of of the community development no man, you're, you're, shift, no man, you're, peer, man you're shifting going you're gone to what this <laughs> government is doing or not no, and i'm asking yes. about something that's within your control that you right. had not done so it no matter what um, Mr. Holness has it, and his administration wanted to do. You yes. guys were actually have been in charge yes. in several parishes mm -hmm. and didn't do some of those basic community interaction methods, measures that you are now. But if we were to look at the country like that, we'd never get changed. So we have to always look at where we are and draw a line and say where we want to go. So what I'm saying to you now is that we have assessed the situation. <laughs> you have changing leadership in political parties, not always the same. So I'm saying we have looked at the situation, we have assessed where we are, and we are developing a roadmap to get to where we want to Let me to hear go. the promises. Yes. Community <laughs> it's, meetings. It's a so contract often? that we are signing with the people of Jamaica. So it, our, our slogan is time come for change. Change is an acronym. The, the C is no, man, for you, you did community that development. You, no, man, you did that already. Tell me about the Which promises one? for the community meetings and the... That, that you had started to speak about quarterly, what is going oh, to yes. happen. Right? Quarterly, quarterly meetings um, so that the, the citizens can participate in the process. They can be updated as to what is going on to ensure that the development plan for the community um, starts from the ground up with the citizens prioritizing their issues to put in place a security council that will take on the divisional command, the principals, the pastors, the community groups, uh, neighborhood watch, citizens association to look at some of those antisocial behavior that you have within the schools and so we can break the reprisal killings that are taking place in the communities because these are persons who will be familiar with individuals in there who can go in there and, and decrease the tension that exists within the community. So that that's a part of what we are promising on the community development and citizen security. On the healthcare, if you want me to go to each one of them in turn. Um, let, let me ask you first, before you go to healthcare, the issue of the Security Council. Because one of the things we like to do in this country is set up committee after committee after committee after committee. And I remember when I was in Montego Bay and they were setting up the parish development committees, which were supposed to be advising the, the parish councils, you know, some of the community members were complaining and saying to me, how many million committees end up on and people keep coming for them for more mm -hmm. and more and more and they sound like that's where we're going again. Not if really. we have a properly functioning, for instance, parish development committee and I don't even know if they're still functioning. They're not. Well, there you go. So what we're doing now is setting up something else by a different name. So, so you have to look at why they are not there. That's the doing of the administration of the day, the Jamaica Labour Party administration. They're the ones who also remove Unite for Change. So you're not going to get a reduction in crime by just focusing on one thing. 
which is just the hardcore policing, <laughs> police and having boots on the ground and buying all of these warships and those other things to, to patrol the harbor. Yes, that is important, but there's also the softer things that are important. Reprisal is one of the main things that cause killing in the country. Somebody being wrong and they try to exact revenge. You have to then get persons of influence in the community to break that cycle. And so what we're doing, the antisocial behavior that exists in schools, the mental health issues that we have, roughly a quarter of every Jamaican suffers from some mental health challenges. Do we do the study to find out the children that are actually affected by it? Or do we just say this is a bad child, it's a rude child, and throw them to the back of the class and beat them? How do you put the principals, the pastors, the police, the customs, and all of those persons together and allow them to work out a process as to you intervene? What do you do to, for the youngsters that are at risk? So it is something that I think is vital and very needed in the communities. <coughs> I, I would take issue with your, your assertion that the government of the day removed the parish development committees because surely you don't need central government to, um, if, if you are truly interested in having a, a, a community committee to assist the municipal corporations, why would you need central government to sign off on that if it's something you as a, as a parish and as a party believe in? Well, because there are other resources that are going to be needed as well. Um, there are some of the councils that we have currently that even the representative from the NWA doesn't go to the meeting. And they're not mandated by the government to say, no, you have to attend the meeting. So it, it, it is something that does require all of government to work together once you believe that this is an appropriate direction in which right. you are to go. They're telling me I'm out of time, Dr. Campbell, but I have to ask you very quickly. We were promised a manifesto in the local government debate. Yes. Natalie Nita Garvey said... The manifesto is finished. Y'all just weren't ready to release it, and we're, we're what? No, so the, when, so, when do I go get it? So when essentially, it essentially, I just outlined those things for you, so it will be released um, between, well, say tomorrow. It will be released. We're ready to go today. Tomorrow. We're ready to go today, but we just made some edits. So by tomorrow, you should it's be able to. It's a promise. You should be able to view it, yes. So was it written after she promised? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, man. This has taken a lot of consultation, a lot of thought process has gone into it. Because there are real challenges that we face as a society. You know, We have to really sit down and look at how we collectively can, can um, impact the, the communities in a positive way. So this is not something that is overnight. This is something that a lot of work has gone into. You don't think it's problematic giving citizens a couple of days to read? No, but seconds. we've been speaking to some of these things. So I've All outlined right. to, for you what the change is. Um, they'll be able to look at the document to dissect it and to digest All it. Right. We look forward to seeing it when it comes out. Thank you yes. so much. We appreciate you coming in. Dr. Gleaton Campbell talking to us. More Stay tuned. And, when and we just one thing, X beside the head. <laughs> We're going to cut that out. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to be talking to the Jamaica Labour Party's um, Venetia Phillips. So stay with us for some come.